Get ready. We are starting to see some great games come back to the map, but this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. And so I'm very happy to uh, welcome on the stage Jason Jones, who is the co-founder of Bungie and the Halo Project lead. Halo is the name of this game, and we're going to see, for the first time, Halo. There are few names in the gaming industry that carry as much weight as Halo. What started off as a simple strategy game for the Mac transformed into the Xbox's killer app that we know today. The series became a gaming phenomenon that struck the world with hype and passion like no other franchise before it. A big part of that success can be attributed to marketing. Halo games are a massive project on their own, but with the right trailer or commercial, it can propel the game beyond its medium, into the public eye and deep within the hearts of fans. Today, I aim my sights towards the past to the teaser trailers of Yonder that every Halo game has given us. Teaser trailers are usually the first look at a game that the public and investors are able to see. These started out small, like the Halo trailer at Macworld, all the way to the bombastic bravado of the Halo 3 E3 trailer. Everything you're about to see is being rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. Back when Halo was still being developed as a real-time strategy game for the Apple Macintosh, the first look that the public ever saw was certainly different than what we know Halo as today. Master Chief looks different, the alien figures, if you will, look different, the vehicles look different, but there's one thing here that I think is really notable, and that's of course the score. Martin O'Donnell has famously said that he came up with the Halo theme on the drive to work. This is the classic Halo theme that we know still to this day, and this is all the way back in 1999. Now if there's one thing that we don't really know much about, and that's usually how teasers work, we don't know how this game really plays. We know that you can kind of walk around and see things and shoot things and run away from things. But, like most teasers, it's just introducing you. It's just setting up the world, the characters, things like that. So, this trailer, this teaser, whatever you want to call it, didn't exactly amp you up to play it. It more intrigued you, and I think that's what this trailer does really well. And if I were to give it a score out of 10, ah, I'd say this is about a 7. You know, it introduces you just about perfectly, and keeps you kind of on the edge, but at the same time, you don't quite see what's so special about this one. Is one of the most eagerly awaited video games finally goes on sale. History preparing to rewrite retail history. A video game is expected to have bigger first day revenues than any movie has ever had an opening day at the box. The anticipation around that, you know, coming, that, that, that Halo 2 was gonna land, um, I think it was, it was just a, a kind of magical moment. And of course, this brings us to Halo 2's announcement trailer. This is one of my personal favorites. While I agree it doesn't quite show off things as adequately as it could, you have to remember, at this point, Halo was a big name. It was selling great numbers for the original Xbox, and it was, of course, the killer app. And it would be no secret if Halo 2 wasn't one of the most anticipated games of all time. Now, of course, this trailer is a little different than what we know Halo 2 as today, but it showed off a lot of important things. Better graphics, better style, and of course, a new armor set for Master Chief. The Mark VI armor was not what he had in Halo 1, so why does he have new armor? Why does he have this new gun? You know, it's, it's setting up the little things that made Halo 2 more bombastic and, and the badass younger brother, if you will. And I think this trailer just does a really good job of that. Plus, he jumps out of the fucking thing. Like, what? What is he doing? Where is he going? Now, we do know now what this was planned to be. Originally, there was going to be a level after the second that Chief would go and go onto the Covenant ship and fight there. Kind of similar to the Truth and Reconciliation from Halo 1. 
but that was obviously cut and replaced with the bomb that then I think is a much more epic scene that makes more sense. Chief hurls the bomb at that Covenant ship and blows it up, but again, this is an announcement trailer. The game is always going to change. This was two years before Halo 2 actually came out, so the fact that the game stayed this similar, at least from this cutscene alone, pretty impressive to me. If I had to give this one a rating, I'd say probably a 7.5 out of 10. It, it gets you excited much more, I think, than the Halo 1 trailer, but it doesn't quite get you on board with the fact that, okay, it's Halo 2, like, where are we going with this? It just kind of, you know, might be on Earth, that's pretty cool, but what else? For a brick, he flew pretty good. Let me paint a picture for you. Halo 2 released in 2004 and ended with a massive cliffhanger that left people wanting much more. Microsoft's new console is finally on the market and has been for about a year, and E3 2006 rolls around and blew people away. The first look at Halo 3 is without a doubt one of the most memorable and bombastic moments in the entire history of the franchise. We're somewhere on Earth and we hear some rather chilling dialogue from Cortana until the Master Chief himself is revealed and I just think this is a great trailer. Everything about it just perfectly emphasizes Halo to me, this big open environment, the music, the characters, the Covenant ships, everything about it. You, know, you look at this and you think, Halo, right? Nothing about this is weird or off-putting. Yeah, sure, it raises some mystery. You know, what is this big thing in the ground? Well, it's the Ark, you know? <laughs> we had to play the game to figure out. I, I think this one just really emphasized that, as well as what the 360 itself could be capable of. This game still looks good, and, and in my opinion, is the best-looking Halo game. And it also just set up the story really well. You know, Cortana, she's off away on high charity, yet somehow she's still able to reach the Chief. Chief himself, he's right here. He has to do something about what's going on with all the Covenant. Does he? I don't know. I just think this is a really good one. Plus, it introduced one of the most iconic songs in the entire history of the franchise, Finish the Fight, with that music. Those single chords alone from Martin O'Donnell are just enough to to get you ready and hyped up. That's why they're used in the marketing for even Halo Infinite. I just think this is a phenomenal trailer. It's really, really cool. I think it's a perfect 10 out of 10. This is the way the world ends. Halo 3 ended the story of the Master Chief and Cortana, yet Bungie still had one more game up their sleeve, and that was Halo Reach. Halo Reach was announced at E3 2009, and it's a very chilling teaser trailer. It shows the planet of Reach being under fire from the Covenant as we hear voiceover, and suddenly, it all cuts out. Reach is known as the game where everyone dies, right? And I think this just does a really, really good job of foreshadowing that, on top of just combining the mystery of everything we knew about Reach beforehand from 1 and 2 and some bits of 3. And I just think this sets up the game perfectly and just it gets you gets you wanting to play it almost and, and ready it's, it's hype but still it's not that perfect of a trailer it's probably about a six out of ten it doesn't quite catch you but it gets you interested that's for sure noble one do you read me this is sierra 259 you got spartans on the ground sir we're not going anywhere After the release of Halo Reach, 343 Industries was handed the reins over by Bungie. They were tasked to make a Halo game within two years for the Xbox 360. Their title would continue the story of the Master Chief and Cortana, and their trailer rightfully reflects that. However, this one's a bit odd. 
it's very weird. We start inside the nervous system and, and the organs of the Master Chief, which right away is very weird, and you're kind of wondering, okay, what's this about? And then we are pulled out of his body, I guess, and we see the Master Chief in the cryosleep, and he wakes up, he grabs Cortana, he goes outside, he sees this planet-looking thing, and the Forward Unto Dawn is falling apart. I think this is a really weird trailer, man, I won't lie. Plus, on top of that, Master Chief, Cortana, everything around him looks a little bit different. This kind of paved the way for 343's new direction, and whether that's a good or bad thing is, well, that's up for a different video. But still, you can't deny this one's a weirdly off-putting trailer, just the way it presents everything to us, so for that reason, I'm going to be giving it a 6 out of 10. You still kind of get excited, but this was a really weird announcement and a weird way to end an E3 that was full of Kinect stuff. Twenty thirteen was a pretty rough year to be an Xbox fan. Microsoft completely bungled the announcement of their brand new console, and their trailer for the next Halo game was a little bit weird, and we'll get into that here. Now, I'd be a fool if I didn't say this is an extremely iconic trailer. Chief in the Cloak is one of the most brilliant things that 343 has come up with, at least marketing-wise, in my opinion. This, however, is a pretty controversial trailer because it reflects almost nothing that we actually see in the final game. Yes, we see a cracked visor on Master Chief. Yes, we see Cortana and hints of her in Halo 5. Well, she's in Halo 5. And of course, the Guardian right smack dab in front of Chief. But I think the reason why this trailer is so weird and, and controversial is because at the time, Consumers just wanted faith in the Xbox One. It had a horrible announcement, and so by the time E3 rolled around, consumers needed more faith in, in the product. And so Microsoft was like, 343, quick, make a trailer for the next Halo, even though it's not even close to being ready, but, but God damn it, we need people to buy it. And so that's, I think, why this trailer feels so different than the final product. Plus, if you look at the end of it, it, it says holiday 2014. Can you imagine if 343 made Halo 5 within two years and instead of the three that they actually got? I just, everything aside, I think that would have been crazy. This just kind of feels though like another announcement of another Halo game. It's not all that particularly exciting in my opinion. Some people really like this trailer and that's fair. There's some people that wish Halo Infinite would have gone with this kind of deal, but we gotta remove ourselves from this one, I think. Negative infinity. Like it. And now, my friends, we reach the present day. And with the rather lukewarm reception of the previous two Halo games, 343 Industries kind of took their time to announce the next one. I remember every day speculating, what is Halo 6 going to be? Well, at E3 2018, we finally got an answer. Halo Infinite. Now, I really like this announcement. We got so much with so little. Just the direction alone I think is a good thing. In fact, I was even kind of lost in the mystery. This trailer isn't even really a Halo trailer if you really think about it. It's setting its world up for us. And then Marines and the Master Chief. I just think this is a really strong outing and really what the community needed. I mean, just look at my reaction with the classic art style. I didn't know how to really react to that. Okay, all right, classic art style. Oh my God, what? But I will say I'm still kind of worried about this game, but from the teaser alone, I just have so much expectations now, and if they're met, then that's a good thing. But one thing I really didn't want to take into account with this video was the actual game itself. And that's why I think talking about this Halo Infinite is perfect, because we don't know what the game is like. This announcement trailer was splendid, it was perfect, and I think that's really all it needed to do, right? Get the classic art style back out there, make people start talking about Halo again, because if we're being real, the franchise has sort of been dead for about three to four years now, and 
Halo Man, it needs a push to go back up on top. And with Infinite, I kind of already see that happening. So many people are talking about it. So many people are getting excited about it. And that's what I like to see, man. And I really hope that this game is a banger. This <laughs> does put a smile on my face. And with that, we're at the end of the video. Can you even believe it? I feel that this was pretty beneficial and almost therapeutic, you know? With all this craziness going on in the world right now, sometimes the best thing we can do is just look back at the past and fond memories that we have of it. If you enjoyed this video, please share it around, let people know. I put a lot of effort into this one and it would mean a lot to me if you told someone, at least one person, <laughs> about it. But with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Please have a good one and as always, stay strong, Spartans.